All right, guys, it's Trybox Reviews. Come with you guys in my review for the Season 2 premiere of Yellow Jackets. All right, so it is great to be back for Yellow Jackets. Season 1 was a really big surprise for me. It was a show that I wasn't even really going to check out at first until I heard a lot of the buzz, right? No, no pun intended uh, for this one. And just really got into it, uh, was just really intrigued, was so excited, especially towards the end of the season, to just watch the episode as soon as possible, uh, as soon as it was available. And something I just really loved in particular was just, to me, what felt like an original kind of unique take on what, you know, otherwise could have been a familiar story, right? With, you know, something like Lord of the Flies comes to mind with these teenagers kind of in the survivalist situation um, and even, you know, the cliches that come along with just the teen drama in general. And I feel like Ashley Lau and Barton Eggers and the creators here just did such a good job at transcending those cliches and kind of avoiding those. Um, and, and it just felt really unique, really original. So um, that was something I really loved about the, the teenager uh, story, which to me felt a little bit, you know, just more intriguing to me overall, like just better, I guess. Uh, I did enjoy that more in season one, but there was a lot of positives that also uh, came from the adult time frame as well. Um, so yeah, so love to hear your guys' thoughts on this premiere episode for season two. Uh, overall, I thought it was actually a rather uneventful episode. There wasn't actually a lot of stuff that happened, especially compared to how season one ended, just firing on all cylinders, and then of course the big moment at the end in the finale. Um, which we basically, you know, see a bit of the aftermath of that for sure in this episode. Um, so yeah, love to hear your guys' thoughts on what you thought uh, of the episode. I'll get into a recap, of course, uh, just kind of a couple things I noticed, a couple points I wanted to talk about. Then I'll get to a rating for the episode, talk about a, a character spotlight, and then some predictions as well, because uh, that's really fun to do with this show. Uh, some predictions for uh, next episode and, and kind of where I see the season going uh, as a whole. Um, seems like we got uh, three more seasons after this one. Uh, supposedly that's what the talk is, um, so we'll have to see, but I'll kind of share my thoughts on, on where I see at least this season uh, going here uh, forward. And uh, if you enjoyed this review, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel as well. Would really appreciate that. But without any further ado, let's get into then some of my uh, some of my points about this episode. So I'm going to split everything up here in my in my discussion between the teenagers timeline and the adults timeline. Just think that's an easier way of doing things. Um, so we'll start off with the teenagers first here. So the big uh, thing I wanted to talk about first was uh, Shauna hanging out with dead Jackie. So this, this was an interesting uh, thing here, and I guess I'll use this time now to just uh, vent a little bit, or rant, I guess, a little bit about the season one finale uh, with Jackie and what had happened to her, because we're now seeing the aftermath of that. So to me, I wasn't a huge fan of what happened to Jackie, right, her fate, because I felt like they had set up, you know, that Jackie wasn't we hadn't seen the adult version of Jackie, right? And she's a really big character. I mean, even you could say she's probably our main character. If you could, you know, if there was one, maybe it'd be her. She is on the poster, after all, for season one. So, and and also she was my favorite character, I, I will say. At least out of the kind of teenager group there. Um, and so, to kind of build that up and, and, and have her as this lead and then... That death, to me, kind of just seemed anticlimactic a little bit, and I did have a little bit of trouble believing that kind of situation as well with her out there sleeping and uh, basically, you know, dying in her sleep, or that's what we're led to believe, uh, where, you know, it, in that situation, that just isn't that realistic. Um, it would be in basically impossible uh, to, you know, die in your sleep, like still sleeping, you would 100% wake up um, from being so cold and your body is just, you know, completely uh, breaking down and, and, and you'd be in a lot, a lot of pain. Um, and then you would, you know, and then you would fall unconscious and eventually, you know, kind of uh, go to sleep as it were. So, you know, and that could be the case, maybe she really was, you know, in that kind of space where she wanted to die in that situation. And they definitely kind of set that up and maybe tease that as well. So anyways, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I would have liked to see that play out a little different, 
yes, she could have died, but I just would have liked to see it in a little bit more, I guess, of a, of a climactic way um, or something like that. Now, having said all that, I really like the way it happened, though. Uh, I, I really like her, her dying when she did because we now see the aftermath with Shauna. And just seeing her kind of hanging out with dead Jackie and talking to her and having these kind of scenes with her um, really shows, you know, she still feels so much guilt for that, right, and still wants her best friend around, and, you know, obviously she is dead, but she is still imagining these kind of conversations with Jackie, right, um, that we see, talking about Jeff and, and these kind of things, and it's kind of funny because the way that, you know, the first conversation plays out, and we're like, isn't Jackie dead? Like, this is kind of weird, and, and then we kind of get this, like, fact that Jackie wouldn't otherwise know about or wouldn't bring up. And then we figured out that, uh, yeah, it's just Shauna imagining this conversation. So um, it is nice also to see Ella Purnell back in some capacity because I thought she was one of the uh, best uh, actors uh, from the uh, cast of teenagers here. Um, and just, yeah, just great to see her getting getting a little bit more work on the show and, and seeing her. And I'm not sure if we'll see her for the whole season. Uh, I'm not sure how long they're going to leave her, her dead body around. Um, but we'll have to see. So I, I just thought that was really great. But yeah, we definitely see Shauna still very much, uh, um, sorry, thinking about uh, this, you know, her death, um, you know, feeling a lot of guilt over it, um, very remorseful, I'm sure as well. And, and obviously blaming herself for, for what happened and, and, and what ended up, um, you know, happening with their relationship as well. And then of course, I want to skip ahead to the very end of the episode, which was just the jaw dropping kind of jump back in your seat, or at least it was for me, when she decides to eat the ear that falls off of Jackie's body when, you know, when Jackie kind of falls down. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, that was insane <laughs> to me. That was insane. And I believe the next episode, um, is it the next episode or episode three? One of them was called like digestive or something like that. Uh, so, or and yeah, and I think next episode is called edible complex, something like that. So, I'm not sure where this is going. I think they're teasing that a little bit, and we'll have to see uh, what her eating this ear uh, starts. If she just spits it out right away in the next episode, or she kind of likes it and they she eats more of Jackie. I don't know where this is gonna go, but that was a, kind of an insane, like kind of what the f like right, like right at the end of the episode. Um, so I thought that was interesting, but again, it just shows that she's trying to keep Jackie with her in some capacity because she feels so bad and that's kind of how it results in her keeping the ear and then I guess tasting it, seeing how it is. I'm not sure, but we'll have to see that one. All right. So next one then is Travis and Natalie are, are, uh, are out looking for uh, Javi and then they're also you know, looking for game as well and they're starting to develop this map. Um, and I think it's Ben who says, you know, oh, seven miles in every direction now. And he, they kind of pull out the board that they have going. So um, interesting there that we have. And I believe they did say as well, it's been two months uh, since Jackie's death. So I guess that's the timeline here between seasons where we pick up. And so it seems like in that two months, they have done a lot of, or gotten a lot of progress going with mapping this out trying to kind of venture out a little further and, and trying to kind of see what's around them. Uh, but the big thing here is looking for Javi, right? And um, obviously Natalie being kind of realistic here and Travis, I think he knows, right? He obviously knows deep down that, that Javi is probably dead at this point, almost for sure he is dead at this point. Of course, he ran off as part of the whole Doom coming uh, shrooms fiasco in, uh, in episode nine, and we have not seen him since. Um, so I wonder how long they will leave us in the dark here with Javi. Uh, I have a feeling that he is still alive somehow, though, because it just feels like, I guess it could be a red herring, right? It could be this thing where they kind of drag it out for a few episodes, and then we find out he is dead. Uh, after all, and it was all kind of for nothing, but it's just interesting that they've kind of kept this open so far, you know, and, and as long as they have now, um, that I, I just have a feeling that something is up here and that, you know, he, he might still be alive uh, somehow, right? <laughs> somehow, because it, it does seem pretty impossible at this point how long he's been out there, um, but yeah, 
We'll have to see. I, I have no idea. I'm sure that something will happen with Lottie. And then we see also Lottie kind of, um, you know, comforting Travis here when he has that panic attack, the kind of hand on his body, which we see as well later in the episode, um, you know, as, uh, as, as as we see the adult version, I believe it is, right, of Lottie, uh, where she puts the, the, the hand um, on, uh, on the girl uh, who she's in there with, right, at the uh, facility, it seems like. So um, that's an interesting one there, and I wonder if somehow Lottie will have something to do with Javi being alive or something like that, bringing him back to life. I'm not sure. Well, we'll have to see, but I do have a feeling that he is alive somehow. Really great to see that dynamic as well between Travis and Natalie. That was one of my favorite parts of season one. Um, to me, Natalie is also one of my favorite characters, so... To see to see that dynamic still playing out and, and that kind of relationship also being a little kind of rocky as well, but they're still kind of, you know, have to go out with each other because they are uh, the best with the gun. The, you know, they've developed kind of the skills for hunting the game now out of everybody, so they're kind of stuck with one another, and uh, we'll have to see where that plays out in this season. Um Okay, so introduction of the new-ish girls is what I'm referring to it as because um, these girls obviously existed in season one, but were not really given any screen time. Uh, and these are the girls from the team that, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I guess we could just say that they're new, right? Uh, they're new to us, but basically they were there in the background um, in season one. So. I think on one hand, it does definitely fill in that plot hole uh, that a few people pointed out that I saw. I didn't really have a problem with it, to be honest, but a few people pointed out, you know, in saying, yeah, I mean, there's more girls than just the ones that we are following right now, and and, and a couple guys there too, right? But it, there's more, you know, characters overall uh, that we, that are still surviving, right? Because we know about the numbers that we have, right, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the day, and we just haven't seen all of them, right? We just are not seeing all of them. So it does fill in that plot hole a little bit of kind of, okay, well, let's see where these other girls are and why we haven't seen them yet. But I'm not a huge fan of it on the other hand because I just would like to spend more time with the characters that we already have and that we've spent so much time with already throughout season one. Um, and now we're kind of having this focus on some 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 of these new ones that we don't know as well. And I just have a feeling as well with one of the main characters uh, that was our main character of the new ones that were introduced uh, with Crystal, the one that was singing a lot and people were telling her to shut up. I didn't really like uh, where that's going, I think, with Crystal and Misty, the kind of foil there for Misty of being this kind of weird, kind of quirky girl to kind of match her energy a little bit. And I just... I don't know. I wasn't a fan of that. I can see kind of where they're going with that. And I don't know. I just would have liked to see that, you know, obviously, you know, I would have just liked to see that character in season one, right? And then obviously we can see that play out and then, you know, we can develop that as, as, uh, as the story goes on here. But it does feel a little forced to me in introducing this new character all of a sudden, um, and, and, and having her play that big part with Misty. Now I could be completely wrong, all these new characters could be dead next episode. We don't know, but this is just kind of what I'm seeing uh, going forward uh, with with the little preview that we got in this episode. So kind of mixed on that. Fills a plot hole, but I would also just like to spend time with the characters we already know. So that's that, that's kind of what it is there. Uh, and then the last one I had for the teenager storyline is Van and Taisa, Van and Ty. Um, so I thought this was kind of an interesting dynamic throughout the episode that we see we see Van kind of insisting on sleeping with Ty up up at the uh, kind of the top of the cabin, right upstairs there uh, in the attic, I guess you'd call it. Even though she keeps having these episodes, Ty does, um, and hurting her unknowingly. We see like this mark on her wrist, and then we see later in the episode where she bites her lip as well um, when she wakes up. And so I just I have a bad feeling <laughs> about about this whole thing. And I still am a little unsure as well on that last scene where she does bite her lip. It almost looked like Taisa knew what was going on and actually kind of did it intentionally to get Van, you know, to leave basically and to go down because she's so worried that she really is going to hurt Van. So that was just my kind of feeling of that scene. Um, 
was that maybe Thais actually didn't know what she was doing in that moment. I don't think she did otherwise, but she's kind of starting to figure this out because she sees the mark on her wrist earlier on, and maybe she does this intentionally, try to get Van to, to go down the stairs and to leave her alone, um, but Van isn't budging. So we'll have to see, but I just, I thought I had to mention this because I got a bad feeling that something is going to happen here. And Van has already been through, I mean, a crazy, crazy situation. Um, and the fact that the scar heals on Van, it, it's a little past the point of, of uh, a kind of that suspension of disbelief uh, a little bit, but uh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm willing to forgive that. Um, but, you know, I, I, it is, you know, kind of an apparent thing and she's been through a lot. So we'll have to see if they put Van through anything else uh, in terms of big injuries and, and that kind of thing uh, at the hands of Thaisa. But we'll have to see on that one. All right. So now let's get to the adults timeline. So Shauna and Jeff, I think they would take up the majority of the screen time here in terms of the adult timeline for this episode. Um, and I thought they were both great. I mean, the actors here are great. Melanie Linsky, obviously, uh, stole the show in season one for me. And, and she is just fantastic in this episode, too. Um, so we see them tie up this loose end with uh, Adam's art studio. Um, and this was kind of interesting to me. It did almost seem like they kind of... I don't want to say they made up the art studio because I, I kind of faintly remember that being mentioned in season one, but they, I feel like they make it a bigger deal here in this episode to kind of give them something to do to tie up Adam's uh, kind of story there as well, uh, which I felt like would have been perfectly tied up anyways, the way it was. Um, so I was a little confused that we were still kind of revisiting the same thing. But anyways... Um, they kind of tie up this loose end. Uh, they go to this art studio. They kind of blur out all the pictures uh, of Shauna that he painted, which was kind of, uh, um, I, I guess you could say, like, maybe kind of creepy. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> kind of uh, Maybe it was like a really nice gesture. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, uh, so they, they clear those up. And then also we get this kind of dynamic with Shauna and Jeff with obviously we see that Jeff is you know has this reaction to to what he's seeing and knowing that Shauna had this affair and then Shauna kind of twists the tables on him a little bit and they have sex and and so it's really interesting to see how manipulative Shauna is um and also see that Jeff is kind of has something up as well that he is you know ha has kind of this uh, persona that he puts on. So it's a really interesting dynamic between these two characters for sure. Um, and I'm hoping to see more of Jeff this season, at least from this episode, that kind of looks like where it's trending. Um, so then we get Shauna's daughter, Callie. Oh, she is just being a pain in the ass, right? Uh, so they end up by the end of the episode here, they burn the remaining evidence of Adam. But of course, Callie finds a piece of his ID uh, that didn't burn fully, right? It's just kind of this corner of the ID. And she takes it and kind of looks at it. And uh, I'm sure she'll probably hold on to it. I doubt very much that she will be throwing it back in and will just forget about this. Um, it's just the way it's going. You can see it. And I thought that Callie was a pain in the ass a little bit in season one. Um, and I, I do think she actually provides a little bit of comedy as well in this episode. So I did really like that. Um, but she was a pain in the ass season one, but I felt like it wasn't as, you know, much, much of like kind of a, a big piece of that kind of plot with Shauna. Um, but it seems like it's really going to be this season. So we'll have to see how uh, how much we can tolerate, right? I think we're all gonna grow to hate Callie, of course, if you don't already, uh, right? But uh, we'll have to see. We'll see what she's up to. Again, though, you kind of do understand the situation and, and her, you know, being in her shoes, um, seeing her, her mother have this affair and, and this, you know, kind of family, you know, breaking up. And of course she doesn't know all of the other stuff that's under the surface. So you kind of get it from her point of view, but she's also kind of acting a little, you know, just rebellious and that kind of thing. So yeah, it is what it is, but I'm sure that will not be the last of that little piece of the ID that Kelly finds for sure. All right. Okay, so then I want to talk about adult Lottie. So we see her for the first time as this leader of, uh, I want to say it's like a retreat or like a rehab facility, something like that. Um, and it's not, I wouldn't even really call it a facility at that point because it's kind of out in the woods. It's kind of like a bunch of cabins and, and that kind of thing out in the woods. Um, 
And it's like, wow, what a surprise, <laughs> you know, that this is what adult Lottie is doing at this point. Makes a lot of sense, of course. Um, so I, I, so there's this adult side of her as well, right? So we see her kind of working with these people. We see her give kind of this speech as well. So we see that she's obviously still very, um, you know, magnetic, I would say, and, and kind of manipulative, I guess you, you really could say too, and that she's able to talk people into a lot of things, right? It's almost this kind of cult, you know, personality, which of course, I think that's what we're going to see play out. And we're already seeing it play out with the teenagers uh, out in the woods, right? So we're seeing that kind of dynamic only now 25 years later and she's an adult and still doing the same kind of thing only in the real world. It seems a little less kind of zany, right? A little less insane. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we get this point of, of adult Lottie, but then we also see Lottie coming back from the crash when they are rescued. And I wasn't a huge fan of this. I did like the kind of sequence there where we see Lottie and we see kind of what she's put through seems like she's kind of put through the shock therapy right when she gets back. Um, and then, like I said earlier, she touches the kind of girl's chest and we see that then come back when she touches Travis later in the episode. So that was nice. That was a nice little callback, provides a little background there. But I just, I didn't like seeing the other girls, to be honest. I would have just liked to see Lottie alone. Um, and I just felt like it's a little too soon, isn't it? Like we're just in season two and to see that kind of scene of all of them coming back and the media and all that stuff, I feel like that's kind of season five territory, right? Like if we're going five seasons, you know, let's explore that when they come home and what the reaction was and all that later on. I, I don't know. I just felt like it was a little too soon to see that kind of stuff already happening. So again, I like it for Lottie because it makes sense with the callback that they do in the episode. Um, but it just seemed like maybe a little too soon to show the kind of rescue and them already, you know, coming back safely. They didn't really look like they have any marks on their face and, and all that kind of stuff. So again, to me, it just felt like they were kind of giving away a little bit of what the future uh, could be. So anyways, that's just my uh, my thought there. But I yeah, and I'm going to talk about Lottie as well when I do my character spotlight here in a minute. And uh, I did really enjoy uh, the, the actress playing her as the adult version. I thought she nailed that. Um, so yeah, really great to see that. All right, so then lastly here, Misty uh, figures that something is wrong with Natalie, right? So that's what we see at the end of the finale, uh, right before Natalie uh, tries to kill herself, really. Uh, these people break in. And, you know, I think it's pretty obvious, a lot of us surmise that it was Lottie and, and her group, uh, you know, that, that came in. And, and I think that's mentioned as, as well, maybe in the finale. Anyways, it was pretty obvious um, that that's, you know, who took Natalie and that's where she was. So Misty goes looking for her, uh, which was one of my favorite scenes of the episode when she has that exchange with the uh, guy at the front desk at the motel. Uh, just really funny. Really funny stuff. Almost seemed like some out of a Coen Brothers movie, just with, you know, how much of a spotlight that little character uh, had, you know, in that scene and, and being this kind of larger than life, you know, character and then having Misty to kind of bounce off them. I just thought that was really great. I, I really enjoyed that scene and, and really funny as well, seeing Misty kind of trying to blackmail him and, and get under his skin to get information. Um, so that was good. And then, of course, we see Misty go to the hotel room, figure out that it was breached, you know, that the door was broken into. And so, uh, and she sees the camera too. So I think Misty will be pretty quick to figure this one out and, and track down where Natalie is um, and whether she'll go there to rescue her or something. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. So then uh, we then see Natalie being held hostage there at this uh, rehab uh, or retreat place, I'm calling it. Um, and uh, she eventually breaks loose, right? Kind of outsmarts the girl that is uh, coming in with the food and all that. Stabs her kind of brutally in the hand with that fork. Uh, she's able to break loose and she runs into the woods. Only then to watch Lottie, who's actually right there. And it looks like they're performing some type of ritual where they're burying this guy alive. Uh, and he's naked and he's, you know, getting in this hole. It's, it's weird. It's weird. But somehow not quite as weird as at the teenager timeline where they're drinking blood now out of this cup, uh, you know, that Lottie's, you know, pricking herself, putting this blood in this cup for Natalie and Travis to drink. So somehow not as weird, but still very strange, right? So that's what's going on. And uh, so Natalie then actually um, confronts Lottie uh, where, you know, she's kind of just 
goes out, runs out to her, and she's right there. And uh, before, of course, that she can whack her over the head with this with this branch that she's carrying, uh, it seems like that's what she wants to do. Lottie says she has a message from Travis for her. And uh, I thought um, Juliette Lewis played this great, just that kind of visceral reaction right away to just hearing those words. And you can see it kind of play out on her face, like, ah, like, just this really kind of deep wound that you see there. And it just, just those words, Lottie knows exactly what to say to kind of get to Natalie there and break her down in that, in that moment. Um, so, and that's kind of where that's left. So we'll have to see what that message from Travis is. Of course, we know now in that adult timeline that he is dead. So uh, we'll have to see if he kind of wrote this for her before his death. He knew Lottie, seems like it. So yeah, we'll have to see. But anyways, those are all my thoughts then uh, for this episode. Now I'll get to my rating and some more predictions. All right, so in terms of the rating for this episode, I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5. And uh, that's kind of where I'll be going. I'll just be doing uh, 0.5s for the, for the ratings. So 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5 out of 5. But anyways, I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5. I thought this was just a solid introductory episode uh, to bring us back, right, to the to the world, to these characters, what's going on. Of course, the bit of a time skip there. So we skipped about two months between, you know, the season one finale and, and where we're at now. Um, but just honestly just uneventful to me a little bit, like not much actually happened in this episode. Seemed like, again, a little bit more of just catching up from what happened in the season one finale, like Shauna and Jeff with the tying up the loose end of Adam. That just really seemed like there was kind of just a little bit of an unfinished thing from last season. And okay, we'll just finish that up now. Um, and even in the teenager timeline, again, setting up a lot of good stuff, uh, but just not much happened in this episode. And to me, the writing was just not quite as sharp as season one so far. Um, I, I just thought uh, at times in some some of these scenes, um, it just didn't feel as as kind of polished um, as what season one did. Uh, but you know, again, it's just the first episode. It is just introductory episode. We did get a little exposition, kind of explaining what happened in those two months um, and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll have to see. How to see how that goes. Um, what I don't like, though, is I did take a look at the credits for the episodes. And it looks like Ashley Lyle and Bart Nickerson, this is the only episode that they themselves are writing for this season, uh, which is a little worrying to me because they wrote three last season, including the finale. Um, so I'm not sure. And I, I think, obviously, they're the strongest writers. I think, you know, we, we can all agree on that um, with them penning the pilot and kind of starting things off here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, kind of why that is. Maybe they're just very busy. Of course, they didn't actually have, I'm sure, a lot of time in between seasons to, to write these scripts and really get going with it. Um, so anyways, we'll have to see. I'll have to see where it goes. I just felt like it just wasn't quite as sharp as season one in some of these scenes, um, not, you know, especially the comedy to me wasn't quite as strong, uh, though there were, you know, kind of some funny moments, some, some moments of levity here. Uh, of course it's not a comedy show, but there is some of that kind of sprinkled in there. And I felt like they did a really good job of that in season one, uh, especially with the teenager timeline, I would say. So anyways, no, you know, no reason for uh, panic or, or, you know, alarms or anything like that. Um, but we'll just have to see going forward, give it a few more episodes and see what is in store here uh, for season two. So favorite character or uh, kind of a spotlight here is Lottie Matthews for this episode. Just thought uh, you had to go with her because it's the first time we're seeing an adult uh, version of her, right? So the adult version is played by, uh, or sorry, the Teenager version is played by Courtney Eaton. Uh, so we saw her in season one, of course. But now uh, Simone Kessel is her name. Uh, and she is playing Lottie now in season two, the adult version. And I thought she was really great at capturing um, kind of, you know, what the teenager version that we've seen so far is and what Courtney Eaton has done. And it's kind of funny because I think in season one, a lot of these, uh, the teenage, well, they're not really teenagers, right? A lot of them are like in their 20s, but some of those younger actress, uh, actors and actresses, um, or I guess mainly actresses, but they kind of saw their adult counterparts with Melanie Linsky, Juliette Lewis, Christina Ritchie, right? Um, and they kind of, I would say, learned from them and kind of tried to adapt their mannerisms. Now, it's kind of the opposite, right, with Simone Kessel because she was not in season one. And so it's like she's kind of learning from Courtney Eaton so it's kind of funny that that kind of um, 
dynamic there and uh, I think she just did a great job of it and uh, yeah so we'll have to see kind of what comes of her this season I'm sure she will play a big big part in the adult timeline in season two um, you know obviously having this message about Travis so immediately she's going to play a big part in that for Natalie um, what is she gonna what effect is she gonna have on Misty and Shauna when they see her probably right they're probably all gonna meet together Taisa. So what is their reaction going to be? I'm really looking forward to that and, and having her kind of come into the fold here um, in season two. And of course, just the way that they spent so much time on Lottie in this episode. And again, showing that callback of her having that that ability to kind of touch you and, and kind of settle you down, calm you down, kind of change your attitude or your mood at that point um, and, and kind of stop a panic attack in, 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 uh, in both cases there. So yeah, I feel like there's a lot more to learn about Lottie, and, and as we go through this story, uh, I'm sure there's there's a lot more to uncover. So, we're looking forward to where we see uh, that come uh, in the rest of the season here. And then in terms of some of my predictions, so I'm expecting a more eventful episode next week. I think we're going to get at least, um, you know, a, a bit more of a, you know, a cliffhanger, I guess you could say, or I'm sure that we'll have some big event, because this one did feel a little more uneventful sure that we're going to have some big event happen in that episode, probably towards the end of it, that maybe sets things rolling a little bit. And I have a feeling it's probably going to be uh, involving adult Lottie and, and having that kind of you know message about Travis and maybe that mystery kind of unfolds a little more. Um, so yeah, so I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm hoping for that um, because like I said, not much happened in this one and not much new kind of stuff that's going to propel us forward, um, what was really brought to light here. So hopefully we'll see more of that. Um, and like I said, we'll just see a lot more of adult Lottie, I'm sure, and kind of fleshing that uh, out. And obviously where she's been, what she's been up to for all these years that we have not spent time with her. Um, and that'll be really interesting, again, to see the relationship she has now with these, uh, you know, older older versions of, uh, of these characters. Um, and obviously Shauna's daughter, Callie, is going to cause trouble. I think that's going to be a big through line for this season, but especially next episode, I think she's going to be right back uh, at Shauna, you know, probably yelling at her and all that stuff. And I'm sure, like I said, we'll find out that she kept that ID and that is going to cause all kinds of trouble for Shauna um, in case the police come looking, anyone really comes looking, uh, it's going to be a bad thing. So we'll have to see what happens, but those are kind of just some of my thoughts going into next episode. But that'll just about do it for my review uh, for this premiere of season two. Again, like I said off the top, love to hear what you guys thought of the episode Anything I said here, you agree or disagree, love to discuss that with you guys uh, either way. And um, yeah, so we'll see you then next week for episode two of season two. Really looking forward to it. And uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching this one. And we'll see you then in the next review. Mm -hmm.